Today is a big day. Do you know why? Because today you're going to learn how to create and code a neural network from scratch using something called the single and the multilayer perceptron. Now I know what your internal neural network might be thinking right now. But Bianca, that sounds sort of complicated. Well, you are sort of right, but we're gonna try to make it as simple as possible because understanding neural networks and deep learning is gonna be imperative for solving problems like image recognition, speech recognition, and natural language processing. So if you want a step-by-step -step guide for better understanding the implementation of a neural network, this video is for you. What is an artificial neural network? Well, an artificial neural network is the base of deep learning, which is a subset of machine learning. So basically, artificial neural networks are designed to learn from input data and create predictions. Think of the human brain for a second. During an experience, we receive information from the outside world. We process that information based on its importance and then we draw conclusions based on that information. The same thing happens within an artificial neural network. You create and interconnect a bunch of neurons which are designed to both receive outside information and be able to send information to each other, basically training themselves to see patterns within data and then predict the output for a new set of similar data. Okay, now that you're more familiar with neural networks, let's talk about the single layer perceptron. I know it sounds fancy, but it's actually the simplest neural network. The single layer perceptron classifies linearly separable cases with the binary output. All that means is that after its calculations, the output will be either one or zero. So the computation of the single layer perceptron is done through calculating the sum of the input vector multiplied by the corresponding element of vector weights. And that sum is then added as an input through an activation function. Now the multilayer perceptron behaves pretty much the same way, but it has hidden layers in which some mathematical wizardry happens. And the result from that is then given as an input to a new layer of neurons. Now let's draw the single layer perceptron to make it a little more simple to understand. So if you remember what I said earlier, the neuron and the neural network needs to receive some inputs first. So let's write them out. So we have x1, x2, and x3. And then we have our neuron right here. But this neuron is going to have to receive the information from the input. And we draw it just like that. But we're not done yet. We need to give it the weights. So each input is going to have its own weight. So weight 1, weight 2 and weight three. And we're not done right now. So this neuron is gonna actually do the summation that we talked about earlier. And I'm gonna show you exactly how in just a second. So this is gonna do the summation. Then this summation is gonna be sent into an activation function. And after the activation function is done, the weights are gonna be updated and the process is gonna be repeated until we find the right output and then we are going to be given the output okay so this is how the neural network actually maps out so let me break it down to you again we have the inputs x1 x2 and x3 each one of them having their own weights so weight one weight two and weight three this information is passed on to the neuron itself, the neuron is gonna do some math wizardry that I'm gonna show you right in a second. And then after the math wizardry is done, we're gonna move that input to the activation function. And the activation function is gonna basically just give us the output. All right, so the math intuition behind this neural network sounds like this. So we're gonna multiply the weights with each of their own inputs sum them together here inside the neuron, the neuron is gonna then pass this summation 
in the activation function and then we're going to get the output. So let me show you how we do this first step. So we're going to need to take the summation of each input, which is x1, x2 and x3, of the multiplication of each weight, so weight 1, weight 2 and weight 3, times each input. All right, but now how does the perceptron actually make the decision on whether or not the problem you ask it to solve falls into category 1 or category 2? Well, in order for it to make that decision, we need to pass it a certain threshold. Basically, the idea behind the threshold is to mimic how actual neurons work. So they either fire or they don't. Now, the rule for the output node is that it needs to have a certain threshold. So if the sound input is bigger than the threshold, then the output is going to fire 1, otherwise it's going to fire 0. So let me actually show you how we can represent that mathematically. So if this summation is bigger or equal than the threshold, then our output is going to fire 1. Otherwise, it's going to fire 0. So else... the summation that we just talked about is smaller than the threshold, then our output is going to be zero. So what happens here is that after we calculate the sum of multiplication of weights and inputs, the activation function comes into play. The activation function is just a step function which produces two outputs based on the threshold. So this learning process is repeated until the perceptron actually gives the right output. So to sum up the training process for the perceptron is 1. Initialize the weights with 0 or a small number and 2. For each training sample, calculate the output and update the weights. So the output value here is the class label predicted by the step function we just named earlier. All right, now enough with the theory. Now let's move on to the computer and start coding. Okay, so maybe you sort of understand the math, but you're wondering what exactly makes this a powerful tool in data science? Well, that is a good question. So let's take an example of one of my favorite things, wine. Now, what you might not know is that every year, tons of people fall victims to wine fraud. That is when someone relabels cheap wine and sells it as though it's a more expensive brand. So how do we find out if a certain wine is legitimate? If only we had a data set that would give us the important information about the characteristics of different types of wine, maybe we will build a perceptron to detect wine fraud. Huh. Look what I found. So right now, for the coding part, I'm going to be using the spider IDE, which is part of Anaconda. And I'm going to be using this because it has the console incorporated. And that's going to make it much easier for us to run the code and see that we're on the right track. Now, for this particular exercise, we're going to need to import the libraries that are going to help us implement the Perceptron. And the first library would be the Pandas library. And we're going to need the pandas library because this is going to help us read the data and transform it into the format that we needed for this particular exercise. So let's just go ahead and do that. So import pandas as pd. So now we're going to introduce sklearn. So from sklearn dot model selection import So what I have done right here was to import from the sklearn library the train test split. And the train test split is actually going to help us split our data set into a train set and a test set. Okay, so now let's move on and import from sklearn again, preprocessing. So from sklearn, again, I have imported from the pre-processing part the standard scalar. And the standard scalar is basically going to help us scale our data. 
All right, now let's move on. So from SK Learn, so from SK Learn Neural Network, I have imported the MLP classifier, and that is going to actually help us build our model. So let's move on to the next import. And from SK Learn, All right, so the last import we're gonna use here, it's gonna be from sklearn metrics, and that is gonna import basically the confusion matrix and the classification report. This is just so we get the results of our model. All right, now that we have the imports, let's get on to reading our data, and we're gonna do that with the help of pandas. So I have downloaded the wine data, and I'm gonna leave it in the description below. So let's take a look at it. I have transformed it into a text file. So this is what it looks like. These are all features about the wine. So we're gonna try to make some sense out of that and try to detect wine fraud with the perceptron. So now since we're gonna try to read the data, I'm gonna make a new variable and I'm gonna call it wine dataset and pd dot, pd comes from pandas. So pd dot read CSV, and we named our data set wine.txt. All right, so now we have read the data set, but if you remember, we did not have any names on the columns. So let's add the names of the columns just to make it a little bit more easier for us to follow through. So we're going to do that with the following line of code, wine.columns. And right now I'm just going to copy and paste the name of the columns that was in the description of the data set. So let's not waste any time and do that. So the names of the data sets are going to be cultivator, alcohol, ash, malic acid, and so on. You can see there's quite a few right here. All right, so now we have added the columns to the data set. So let's take a look at the data now that we have added the columns. So we do that by the print statement. So print wine data set. There we go. So it actually did give us the names up here on top. All right, now let's move on. I want to get a little bit of a description of what we're dealing with right here. So we're going to do that by the print statement again. So wine data set. So we're going to do a describe and then we're going to do a transpose. So let's run that. There we go. So basically we have here the names of the columns and then we have a count, we have a mean, a standard deviation and all of our statistics. So I also want to see the shape of the data and we do that pretty easily with the shape statement. So I'm going to do print wine data set, oops, dot shape. So we have here, this is the result, this is the output, and the output means we have 177 data points and 14 features. All right, now since we know what we're dealing with, let's set up our data and our labels. And we do that by the following lines of code. So our X variable is going to do wine data set, drop, and then we're going to do cultivator, and axis is one. Okay, so what I have done with this line of code was to drop from the initial data set, the cultivator column, and actually I'm going to attribute it to our label. So our label is going to be Y, so it's going to be wine data set, there we go. So now we have assigned that column to our Y variable. 
So now that we have prepared our data and our labels, I'm actually going to split our data set into a train set and into a test set with the help of the sklearn library. And we're going to do that. Remember, we need to do this because we need to train our model on data that it knows. And then we're going to test it on a similar set of data, which is our test set. So let's give it a go. So it's x train x test y train and y test it's going to be train test split of our two variables x and y now that we have split our data into a test set and into a train set let's scale it and we're going to do that with the following line of code it's going to be scalar and we're going to use the standard scalar from the sklearn library so it's going to be scalar that fit x train so x train is going to be scalar dot transform x train and x test is going to be again scalar that transform x test. All right, so everything that you've seen that we have done until now is actually to just prepare our data to plug into our model. So what we're gonna do right now is actually build our model and see whether or not we can actually detect wine fraud. So I'm gonna build a classifier right now, MLP, which is going to be MLP classifier. And for this exact parameter, I'm going to plug in how many neurons I want for each layer. So let's do 13 and I'm going to give it a maximum iteration of 500. So it's going to be 500 epochs maximum, meaning that we're only going to do this. And this classifier is only going to do this a maximum of 500 times. Now, since we have built a classifier, we're actually going to need to fit it to our train sets. So it's going to be MLP.fit. So it's going to be MLP fit X train and Y train. And remember, we're only going to do this on the train sets because we want to only train on the data that we have split already. I don't want to go on and do the training on the test set. That's wrong, so don't do that. We're only gonna do the train sets. All right, so this is the moment. Let's create the predictions. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna need to create a new variable called predictions. So predictions equals MLP dot predict x test now the last step is to print out our results so we're going to do that with two print statements so it's going to be print so we're going to use the confusion matrix right now on the y test and the predictions and print the classification report on Y test and predictions. Okay, so this is it. Are you ready to find out how many bottles of wine have been correctly classified? Let's give it a try. All right, so this is our result. This is the confusion matrix and this is the classification report. And from what I can see right now is that only one bottle has not been classified correctly. So our accuracy score is 98%, which is amazing. As close as you get to 100%, the better. So 98 is not too shabby. All right, so this was it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So please let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I will see you in the next one.